everybody, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini. I'm posting weekly video tutorials here on my YouTube channel, so make sure to subscribe. In this video, I am going to walk you through step by step on how to create these really cute and functional pop out pouches. We're even going to touch on machine embroidery and teach you the basics of applique. Alright, so here is the little pop-out pouch that we're going to be working on in this tutorial. This is the front, this is the back, and when you squeeze on both ends here of the hardware, you see that it squeezes open so you can access it, put things in, take them out, and once I let it go, it just snaps back shut. So very handy, quick and easy little gift items that you can make for everybody in your family. Now, in this tutorial, I am going to show you how to make the entire thing, but also how to use the embroidery machine to add an applique design here with an initial of a name. So we're going to be using my Dominicana fabric collection. We're going to show you everything, how to finish this off. And if you notice, you may have seen pouches like this before. I made sure to design this so that there's absolutely no raw edges anywhere on the outside or on the interior. Let's go over the supplies that we need and I hope you enjoy it. All right, so to begin, we're going to pick out two pieces of fabric that are going to be for the outer, this side and this side, so you can choose those. I cut some corresponding just cotton batting pieces, a little bit bigger. They can be about the same size. We will trim them down to the exact dimensions of the fabrics. The lining pieces are going to be for the fabric that lines the pouch on the interior portion here, and these are obviously cut to the exact same dimensions as the outside. For the exact dimensions, make sure that you click the link in the description box below. I've included all the dimensions information there for you in the accompanying blog post for this tutorial. Now aside from your outer and lining pieces, you're also going to need some fabric and supplies for the applique. So here we have a little piece of fabric which is going to make up the background of this kind of flower design. Then you're going to need a little chunk of paper backed fusible web as well. And then of course the threads that you want to use both for the outer satin stitch of the entire applique and for the actual letter initial here. Now if you have an embroidery machine and you're interested in this little design, you can also click the link in the description box below. I sell this in my online shop and it's basically the little flower design with every single letter from the alphabet so you basically get 26 different little appliques that way you can make these little pouches for anybody regardless of their name. Now aside from this stuff, we're going to need some materials for the actual embroidering of the applique. For this, I'm going to use my tear it away stabilizer and the hoop that I'm going to use for the machine I'm using. You're also going to need something to write on your fabric, some fabric safe water soluble or disappearing ink markers, some little small snips. I prefer to use these applique ones which are great because they kind of curve up so they allow you to cut nice and close to the edge here so you get a nice clean finish like this design. A rotary cutter or a pair of scissors so that you can cut your fabrics to the uh, correct dimensions. Some pins, clips, uh, your favorite uh, temporary spray adhesive and you can get this also in a link that I've included for you in the description box. And then of course we're gonna need the actual hardware which is what makes this pouch so cute and handy. And for that you're gonna need one piece that looks like this and a very tiny little metal stick that is going to be inserted on the other end so that we can finish installing it and then properly use our little snap closure. And for those of you that may want to get your hands on some of these so you can start cranking these out as gifts for your loved ones, make sure that you head over to my online shop because we're currently carrying them in stock. All right, so let's start off with the first step. You want to take your two outer fabric pieces and either quilt them onto the batting or just use a little bit of temporary spray adhesive and spray the back of it. Make sure that you're either outside or in a well-ventilated area. And now you want to trim the batting to the exact dimensions of the actual fabric pieces. At this point, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and baste around both of these rectangles about an eighth of an inch away from the edges. I find that it's just a step that I can skip because the pieces are so small, they're very easy to handle. The next step is to make some marks on the one piece of the fabric that you want to be the outer portion so we can do some measurements here and embroider on one side of our pouch. So I say, let's use this one. First, you want to measure two and a half inches down from what is going to be the top. All right, and if you want, put a little arrow so you know that that is going upwards. So you want to have this oriented correctly because the last thing you want is to embroider the letter on it upside down like that. All right, so this is going to be the top portion. And if you're wondering what this is for, this is because that's the part that's going to be overlapped like that to make space for the closure in the finished project. So really, all you're going to be seeing is from this stitch line down. You see this? 
how it matches. So this is where we're going to be working with when it comes to the dimensions and lining up the center of this so that we can embroider our applique letter. Now the next line I want to mark is two and a quarter inches in from the edge here. And I'm going to draw a line all the way down my fabric piece. Now the next line we need to draw is going to depend on how and where we want the applique image centered here. I tend to like it when I measure about an inch and a half to an inch and three quarters down from this line. And this one I did at one and a half, so we'll try this one at one and three quarters. But somewhere in that range, I think, tends to center it pretty nicely in the overall finished pouch design. So from this line over, I'm going to measure one and three quarter inches this time. And draw that line all the way across the entire outer panel. All right, now we are ready to prep our embroidery hoop so that we can line everything up to embroider the applique on it before we can move on with the other steps of creating the pouch. So here I am going to remove the inner hoop, grab my tear it away, measure, cut a piece that fits in the hoop. Here I have the outer hoop oriented in the same way that it's going to be installed into my embroidery machine. Then I lay my tear it away stabilizer over it and I'm going to hoop these two in there. Push the hoop until you feel a little ridge kind of pop out on the other side. That way you know it's nice and secure and it's nice and pretty taut in there, okay? So if you are the embroidery police, uh, you're definitely gonna get mad at me for floating this project, but I love it for this. One of the reasons I like to float after I've cut projects out to size, they typically would recommend that you say embroider on a larger piece that can fit inside the hoop, right? Well, what happens is if you do any of your cutting a little bit off or skewed, even though you properly centered the design right where you wanted it, you're not gonna be able to end up with a successful project. So I prefer to cut everything to the correct dimensions, line up uh, the, the lines or the crosshairs exactly where I need the applique to embroider on, and then I can continue my project from there. So this is just one way to do it. This is how I do it, and of course, this is how I do it, so it works for me. If you have a better way of doing it, or you prefer to embroider on a larger quilt sandwich here and then trim it down to size, absolutely doable as well. This is just the way that I prefer. So I'm gonna take my temporary spray adhesive and just hit the back of this a little bit. Okay, now notice we drew out the lines here and here. So because the piece is smaller than the hoop, I can see if this line, this is the line, not this top one, the second one down is the one that you wanna line up with the side little things on your hoop, okay? And then the vertical line, obviously you want it to be in line with this and the top one. So I'm gonna scoot this over and I can see, you can even take a ruler and measure, so make sure that you're in line with the center of the hoop and that looks pretty good. Good. I'm gonna turn it there a little bit and do the same thing with the side lines right there, okay? And then I just give it a good press so it stays in place. All right, so our stabilizer is hooped. We have sprayed the temporary spray adhesive on our little outer panel here. You can see it's not going anywhere. Now we're gonna head over to the embroider machine and install this so we can pull up our design. Now before I install my hoop, I always like to go in and put in the bobbin that I need. That way I don't have to remove my hoop to then go back in and install the bobbin. I have a pre-wound bobbin here that still has a little bit of thread left on it. So I'm going to install it here. There, the top thing is already threaded. I can see I threaded the needle, so we are good to go on the thread. Now let's grab our hoop, and I am going to slide it in, secure it in place. Now to load our design into the machine, you can see I have my USB stick already installed here, so we're gonna hit the USB button to access that memory. And then I'll scroll down to find my design. I'm gonna make this one with the letter M for my sister Melissa, so we'll hit that and it pulls up the design right here for you. Now we'll hit where it says embroidery, and now we're on the, the page where it's ready to start stitching. Up here in this little box, you'll see what the first part of the design is that's going to stitch out. And typically, if you're working on a machine embroidery applique, the first line of stitching is going to be a placement line, letting you know where you need to uh, put a piece of fabric so that then it can get tacked down. And that's basically gonna make up the background of where the letter will then go back and be stitched over it, okay? So we're gonna walk you through step by step. But right now, let's head over to the hoop so I can show you how to proceed precisely line up the design right in the center where we want it to be oriented. 
Now when you install the hoop in here, have a look and see if the needle is directly above the intersection of both of these lines. That way you know that it's lined up with what you lined up to be your center position. If it's slightly off, no worries. Most machines these days have up, down, and side to side arrows that will allow you to move over uh, the needle positioning based on where the hoop is. So I'm going to use my arrows here on my screen and you'll see what happens at the hoop. I'm gonna move over and I think one back right there. That looks pretty good to me. So now we are ready to lower the presser foot and start stitching out our design. All right, so now that it has stopped stitching out that little placement design, I'm gonna trim away that last little thread that was there. Now that's telling me, okay, you need a piece of fabric that will cover everything inside of that stitch line. So let's head over to the work table so we can prep the little piece of applique fabric with our paperback fusible web. All right, so I have my square of fabric that I want to be the background of where the letter is going to stitch out on and my paperback fusible web. This is a product that has kind of a slick, almost uh, wax, not wax paper, like parchment paper feeling on one side and on the other, it looks a little bit more fibrous. It's kind of just a really thin sheet of adhesive and it feels a little rougher to the touch than the slick paper side. So you wanna turn your fabric piece pretty side face down and you wanna take this the rough or adhesive side onto the wrong or ugly side of the fabric. So you only wanna hit the paper side with your iron. And then I'm just gonna hold it for a couple seconds. You're basically setting the adhesive so that it now is going to adhere to the back of the fabric and we can peel away this kind of non-stick paper from the parchment paper side, and then the adhesive will stay stuck on the fabric. So I always let it cool. You can see it's still hot to the touch. If you try to peel the paper off while it's still hot to the touch, the adhesive has still been uh, melted, so it'll still be kind of gooey, and when you go to peel it off, it'll stay stuck in between both the paper and the fabric. So you wanna let it cool so it comes back down to temperature, and that way it will make for a lot easier peeling of the paper backing and you can see that once I peel the paper the paper is now same texture on both sides and the glue or the adhesive there's a little bit of a sheen to it is now adhered to the back of my fabric and that is all you need to do to prep your applique fabric so let's head on back to the embroidery machine now we take our little piece of fabric that's been prepped with the fusible adhesive on the back, orient it however you want, and notice it's bigger than the stitch line. As long as the piece is bigger than your placement line that just stitched out, you will be good. So this one, some of the products that you may use with the adhesive can have like a sticky back, so they'll stay a little bit better than this one. This one, it's not sticky to the touch, but because it's such a small piece, I kind of just press it on there and uh, let it start stitching again. It typically doesn't move on you. So let's put the presser foot down. And the next step in the design is to stitch now a tacking down stitch that's going to anchor this top fabric right into position. Okay, so it's done doing the little tack down stitch to anchor that top fabric in place. So now the next step is to actually remove the hoop from the machine and you wanna do this carefully, especially because we're floating. You don't want this to come up on you or move or shift in any way. So we are going to remove the hoop and take it over to a flat work surface, which is where we want to have our hoop so we can go ahead and trim away the excess fabric. Okay, so grab your snips and bring this over. You want it to be on a nice flat surface because you don't want to be pushing up from the bottom so that this pops out or moves or the whole thing could just come out of the hoop, okay? So really carefully, we're gonna take some of these curved snips and we are just going to cut around the excess fabric right outside of the stitching line for that line that just stitched out giving you that outline space of uh, the little flower shape. Now when you're cutting around this, notice how I do it, and you're, it's going to take a little time and, and for you to kind of figure out what works for you and how you can hold everything so you can get really nice and close to that stitch line. If you cut into the stitching, it's not a big deal because this is going to be hidden in place by the finishing satin stitch that's en that is then going to go around the entire uh, edge 
of the, the flower shape, okay? So cut super, super close. And if you cut into the threads, that's all right. So what I typically do is lift the fabric up and with the curved edge of the little scissor snips here, I get super close. And take your time. If you've never done this before, you'll probably your first time leave too much of an edge and then you'll see the little threads of the fabric sticking out after the uh, satin stitch stitches out. But trust me, you only need one or two times of that to then realize, okay, I'm not trimming close enough to the edge. And just work your way around. Now, the paperback fusible web that we use, remember, it is fusible. You do not want to fuse this to it until after you trim away the excess. Because if we had all this on here and I fused it, there's no way you're going to be able to trim away the excess. You'll have to like peel it up and rip it up and you will mess up your project. So you just hold it in place, let it do the little tack down stitch to hold that fabric there, trim away the excess, and then we'll go back now and uh, press it with the iron to fuse the fabric to the background outer fabric. And I'm just gonna make sure I've gotten nice and close. It's hard for y'all to see because I use the same color thread, but you'll see when you try it out. All right, so now we carefully will pick up the hoop Place it on an ironing surface, and you can take your, uh, if you have a mini travel iron, you can use that. I don't have one plugged up right now, so I'm just going to use the tip of my big iron here. But we're just going to fuse this down and all around those edges. And I'm just using the little tip, tip, tip of my iron. All right, so that looks good. Now we install it back into the machine and move on to the next step. Now I just wanna point out that on my screen here, you can see that we moved on to another step. In the square here that shows us what the next step is going to stitch out, you can see that it's a nice filled in satin stitch that's going to hold down the applique fabric or seal off the edges that we just uh, fused into place. So right now is when you wanna stop and kind of figure out based on your design and the fabrics you're using and stuff, what thread color you want to go thick like this all the way around your little flower. And now that the little flower shape has been completely set and stitched down into place, you can see that up here in the box we have the letter M, meaning the design and the machine are ready to move on to the last step, which is just to embroider the actual letter. Press your foot down, start. All right, so our design is completely done stitching out our applique. That was super easy. I hope that you all will give it a try. Remember, if you're interested in this little flower design for this pouch, it's the perfect size for this. Really, you can use uh, some of your scraps. Remember, it's just a really small square that you need for the background fabric and then just some thread aside from the design. Remember, the design also includes all 26 alphabet letters. So let's grab this, head over to our work table, and then we'll continue to make our pouch. All right, so let's pop this out of the hoop. Since I used the tear it away, just come on the back side, kind of put my fingers down on the applique part, and it tears right up to the stitching line super, super easily. All right, I don't bother to take out the stabilizer that's in there, I leave that in place. Remember that this is the batting side, so in the project, this is going to be backed by our lining fabric, so you're not gonna see any of that, and you might as well just leave it in there for a little extra support. Now we will iron away some of our marks here that we did to line this up in the center. Since I used a, a marker that disappears with the ink, that's gonna work fine. And that looks good.